Is quick mixing the root of all evil or is it awesome? Let's tackle that today. Talk about it a little bit. Rachel Lynch put together a really nice article on this that she posted on her Facebook page. She makes some great points and I agree with all of them. I'm not sure where you can publicly see this article and I don't want to copy paste it in the description. It's her article. But if anybody knows where we can see this publicly, let us know in the comment section. Alternately, if I find out, I'll put it a link in the description of this video. But essentially what she's saying is, if you do it, great, but don't do it wrong. Know when to do it, know how to do it, and, and pay attention to your audience. She, I agree with her points. But I thought it would be interesting to talk about quick mixing a bit, and the concept of it, and how maybe you could use it. By the way, this video was brought to you by Hollywood DJ, located in Los Angeles, California. They are one of our channel sponsors. You can go there for all things DJ. Alan's a good pal of mine. He's down there. He'll hook you up. Give him a call. Or check out the website in the description of this video. Thank you, Hollywood DJ, for being one of our channel sponsors. I want to go back and talk about the concept of Quick Mix. We didn't used to call it that call it medleys or mega mixes and they've been around for a long long time this is not a new thing nobody invented this recently quick mix is a relatively new term i'm thinking about way 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 back before my time most songs on the radio were maybe a little over two minutes long maybe three you didn't want to have a real long song for radio in the 60s and 70s, songs started getting much longer, especially on album tracks. So sometimes what would happen is an artist would do two separate recordings of a song. They would do one for their album, they would do one for radio, and they had completely different nuances in them. Other times, there would be a long version of a song on an album, and in the studio, somebody would take a pair of scissors and a roll of tape with the reel-to-reel -reel and cut it up to make it short for radio. A really good example of this would be Miracles by Jefferson Starship. The album version and the radio edit, it's the same session, it's just cut up for radio. This was before you could chop stuff on your computer. It was just something you did with a pair of scissors and a roll of tape back in the old days. There were the long versions of songs that you could get on a 12 inch single. The game back in the old days of disco was to make a song as long as you could, especially if it was a jam. Songs would last for 45 minutes sometimes. A DJ was able to loop them over and over and over again. Back in the olden, olden days, like at Stonewall, they would take 45s and do this and just try to see how long they could make a song last, going back and forth mixing with turntables, very early mixing as we know it. So that used to be the name of the game, Make It Long. And, and the 12-inch was the dance version. It was the long version with the intros and outros and all these other weird nuances. And then there's the medley. The medley is something that sometimes a band would do live. Sometimes a band maybe would do a medley of their own songs in concerts. Sometimes another band, like a cover band, would, would do a medley. And they've been around forever and ever and ever and ever. The medley that first caught my attention and I absolutely loved was the Stars on 45 medley. If you're not familiar with it, check it out. I will put a link to this in the description of this video. It's a medley of Beatles songs for the most part. But the official title of the song is actually the longest title ever to be on Billboard. Everybody called it the Stars on 45 medley, but here's the official title. And I got to pull it up here to read it to you. The official title of the song is Medley Intro Venus Sugar Sugar No Reply. I'll be back. Drive my car. Do you want to know a secret? We can work it out. I should have known better. Nowhere, man. You're going to lose that girl. Stars on 45. That is the real title of the song. But no one says that. They say Stars on 45 Medley. It was cool. And a lot of people maybe didn't like it especially Beatles fans because it was a cover band doing them but there was a backbeat behind it very danceable and I ate it up when I first heard it I, th I thought it was amazing so that's kind of like a quick mix but it's performed live to a click track 
and it's nice. In the old days of like house music, you used to be able to get like mega mixes of all the great house tracks. Somebody like Julian Jumpin Perez would do this, and it was cool. I mean, this is not a new concept. The, the concept of a DJ being able to do it with a computer and a controller effectively is a relatively new concept. Could DJs do it with turntables? Yeah. Would it have been difficult? Absolutely. And it totally was difficult. Look, records are a completely different thing than doing it on computer. Uh, computer's cool. I love computer stuff. It does make things that were difficult easy, like loops and cues and just keeping your needle on the record for some of the crazy stuff that people want to do today. Don't have to worry about having that sort of delicate touch sometimes when it comes to the records with the computers and the controllers and all that stuff. But I'm all about creativity. That's my thing. I love it when you can just imagine it and do it regardless of your skill level. So I'm not hating on it. Don't, don't take that the wrong way. It's just easier to do now. And a lot of DJs have embraced this quick mix thing. And sometimes they will do it all night. And the argument in, in Rachel's article was a lot of DJs are saying that, you know, people don't want to hear this all night long. This, this is not good. They want to hear the whole version of the song. When we speak in absolutes like that, it's weird to me. I think there's a time and a place for things, personally. My opinions, not hitting on anybody's art form here. You do you, always do you. And, you know, when I'm doing whatever I'm doing, I'm trying to do it to best serve my audience. Whatever's going to best serve my audience, that's what, I'm, that's what I want to do. So when I'm mixing, I'm using several different types of techniques. Typically, for the most part, as a general rule, I'm mixing radio edits of songs. I'm not jumping into the extended versions of songs. There are exceptions to that rule. But for the most part, it's the radio edits that I'm mixing in and out of because those are the familiar versions. And a lot of times I'm playing the song because that's what people want to hear. But then there are situations where... Maybe you've got a crowd that wants to hear a certain type of music, but not all night. I'll give you an example. As a mobile DJ, in the old days, we got these CDs called DJ Tools. And they were highly illegal, but they were very cool. And there were some medleys on those DJ Tools. One in particular that I think I've played it like within the last five years or so. There's an Elvis medley on there with a whole bunch of Elvis songs. And it starts off with Jailhouse Rock and it ends with Suspicious Minds. And I think it's like maybe three and a half, four minutes long. It's great. You can play this and get a whole bunch of Elvis songs in. Like quick mix style, as we would say today. That's a cool thing to have. With Quinceañera DJs, if you are a Quinceañera DJ, you will know this is true. Latino audiences dig freestyle of all ages. They, they generally dig freestyle, but you don't want to play freestyle all night. So like my pal Art, he'll do a freestyle medley, like a quick mix freestyle medley live with just some really hot freestyle tracks, maybe some little Susie, some Stevie B, some expose, whatever. He'll do like maybe 10 or 15 minutes of that and just get those hot tracks in there so the audience can hear those. Is he doing it all night? No, he's not. But he's doing this 10, 15 minute freestyle set and that's cool. And it's done in uh, the style of quick mix. Personally, yeah, like I said before, I will do what we call quick mix now once in a while with certain tracks, just to get them in there. It's like, okay, I wanna do a whole bunch of late 90s, early 80s R&B stuff, but I don't want to do an hour of it, but I want to squeeze in Candy Shop and in the club and some Missy Elliott and some Nelly or whatever. So maybe I'll do a quick mix medley of those songs. Sometimes I'm doing EDM 
and I'm doing something like Black Eyed Peas or LMFAO or something like that, you know, that 15 years ago EDM mainstream stuff, I don't necessarily need to play the whole song of something like I Got a Feeling. You know, there, there's verse, chorus, bridge, and then you can jump out of it into something else. That stuff is kind of made to mix in and out of quick. Will I do it all night? No. But that, that's my take on the art form. It, this is not what I feel like should be a general rule. Your rules are whatever your audience is feeling, in my opinion. If your audience wants to get in and out of tracks really fast and that's your style, please do it. If your audience wants to hear the entire song, do that. If there are instances, like in my case, where you want to squeeze in a genre or a style or an artist and you don't want to mess with it for an hour, but you want to get them in there in three, four, five minutes, do that. No rules, man. This is DJing. This is art. And I don't think we should be talking about absolutes here for anybody. We should just do our thing and, and do what's best for our audience and have fun. I've heard DJs do quick mix stuff, and, and I've loved it. I've heard them do it for extended periods of time, like much longer than I ever would do it, and it's effective. A lot of it has to do with the style of music they're playing. A lot of it has to do with the vibe that's happening that night. It may work better for some audiences than others, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm there with you. But it's been my philosophy when it comes to DJing, as I've talked about in videos even recently, is mixing up styles of mixing and transitions and things to keep it interesting. I don't like to be predictable. I don't want my audience to think, okay, I've heard intro, verse, chorus. It's going to mix into something else now. I don't want them to think that. I want them to not know what's coming. But I also don't want to cut them short, personally. I want them to feel fulfilled. So, yeah, sometimes for me, absolutely, the full version of the song is the way to go. Sometimes cutting it is okay. There are no rules here, guys. And, and stop talking in absolutes here, you know? Come on, this is art. Let's just have fun and, and share what we know and, and stop being so competitive and nasty about this. Knock it off. I'm done. Thanks. We'll see you soon. I appreciate you guys so much for tuning in. Really do appreciate you for that. We'll see you next time. Practice and enjoy.